Take just a few minutes to learn the steps and sequence for operatory disinfection. When preparing to treat patients, an important step is to ensure the treatment room is clean and safe for patient care, which means it must be thoroughly and properly disinfected after each treatment visit is completed. The first step is to don personal protective attire. Begin by washing your hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand rub. Place your gown and tie it loosely at your neck and waist. If wearing a coat, button or zip it fully. Then place your surgical mask. Place the loops behind your ears and secure the mask snugly over the bridge of your nose. Pull the other end of the mask down below your chin. If wearing an N95 respirator, be sure to place the lower elastic strap at the base of your neck and the top elastic at the crown. Then use both your hands to pinch it evenly across the bridge of your nose and fit it tightly to your face. Next, place your eye protection. Goggles, glasses with side shields, or a chin-length face shield. Don heavy utility gloves to perform the cleaning and disinfection of clinical contact surfaces. This helps avoid puncture injuries and protects your skin from contact with the chemical disinfectant. Now that you have your protective attire in place, you can begin cleaning and disinfecting the treatment room. Start by running a vacuum line cleaner through each suction line, both high and low speed. If preparing for the first patient of the day, flush the dental air unit and water lines with air and water for two minutes before you attach devices such as hand pieces and air water syringe tips. Discharge the water into the sink or a cup. Clinical contact surfaces that cannot be cleaned and disinfected must be protected by a fluid-proof barrier, and the barrier must be changed after each patient. Transport instruments, hand pieces, and other items that can be removed from air and water lines to the sterilization area in a leak-proof, puncture-proof container that is solid on the sides and bottom and labeled with the biohazard symbol. Return to the treatment room to clean and disinfect all surfaces that may have been contaminated by patient oral fluids or blood. Cleaning always precedes disinfection to ensure removal of debris, such as oral fluids, blood, and dental materials that may interfere with the disinfection process. Carefully clean all clinical contact surfaces in the operatory, including unprotected computer components, patient chairs, operator and assistant tools, light handles, delivery trays, counters and all attachments, hoses and brackets, and the delivery units. Some disinfectants double as cleaners and can be used for this step. If the disinfectant you use is not a cleaner, use an appropriate cleaning agent. Apply an EPA-registered hospital disinfectant to all clinical contact surfaces and allow it to remain wet for the time indicated on the product label. In the presence of blood, be sure to use a tuberculocidal intermediate level disinfectant, also labeled as effective against hepatitis and HIV. For surfaces that are not contaminated with blood, a low-level disinfectant labeled effective against hepatitis and HIV is acceptable. Wipe any residual disinfectant free before seating the next patient. Remove your heavy-duty gloves and set aside. These may either be cleaned and disinfected for reuse or heat sterilized, as the manufacturer indicates. Immediately following glove removal, wash your hands or use an alcohol-based hand rub. Begin to set up the treatment room for the next patient. Replace all plastic barriers and chair covers. Retrieve instruments, devices, and dental materials needed for the next procedure and place them in the dental treatment room. Now you've completed the disinfection cycle. Ensure your protocols are consistent throughout the day to keep your team and patients safe.